you're new to DCS and you're not sure where to start, I just want to put out one thing. If your significant other is not prepared for you to have a full on sim pit in the living room, you might want to sort out some personal issues first. As you've probably seen online, that's where this can end up. You can end up with a full on FA18 life size cockpit in your living room, in your games room, in your office, in your garage. Hopefully you don't get kicked out to the garage and told to live out there. Now that that disclaimer is out of the way, let's get stuck into the first thing you need to do. So you need to buy the game or you need to get the game. I would highly recommend going to the DCS website, downloading the game from there, signing up through there. You just get way better deals through the website than what you do through Steam. They're also running a 50% off discount for your first aircraft package. So there's another great bonus through going through the website. And last but not least, they give you a 14 day free trial of any aircraft package as well. Before we carry on, I just wanted to mention that I will have all the links in the description. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about or you wanna have a better look at something, they'll all be down there. Anyway, back to the meat and potatoes. What inputs are you going to use to fly DCS? Do you want to use a drum kit and become the first person ever to fly a full fidelity FA-18 with a drumstick? Be my guess. First on the list is the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. This is a very entry level basic flight stick. It's been around for years. Design has not changed. I actually remember having it when I was about 14 or playing Battlefield 2 with it of all games. So. Yeah, very basic entry level flight stick. Thrustmaster T Flight, another very entry level thing. The difference between this and the Logitech stick is the T Flight is a HOTAS as well. So you have a separate throttle and you have a, your joystick. Very limited, again, like the Logitech, only has one hat. Next on the list is the Thrustmaster T16000. It's another pretty basic setup. You have your flight stick and you can have a HOTAS as well. Reasonably nice stick. I don't know too much about it. But from what I understand, there is a few sort of reliability issues later on down the track. So don't expect something like this to last. The Logitech X52. I haven't actually had, haven't seen too much bad feedback about this. It's probably a really nice entry level HOTAS, has a few buttons, most people have said it's enough for them to get started. The X56 HOTAS or Rhino, I've actually started with this one, it's probably overpriced for what it is and if you're going to spend the money that you're going to spend on this HOTAS and you're not so sure you're sold on a complete HOTAS, this next stick I would highly recommend. It is the almighty VKB Gladiator. Evo series, bang for buck, quality, just everything. It's just the best value for money on the market at the moment. And it is, it just, they just scream quality. I've bought myself the right hand VKB Evo and I've bought myself the left hand VKB Omni. Fly the F16 at the moment, so the Omni is perfect and I'm not good enough to fly and take advantage of the split throttle aircraft. So even if I am flying a split throttle aircraft, I'm not really going to need that split HOTAS. So VKBs, hands down, best bang for buck. Definitely look at it, definitely consider it if you, if you want to take DCS reasonably seriously. I think that covers the basic entry level stuff on the way of flight sticks and with a little bit more quality stuff towards the end of that list there. Now the next thing we want to talk about is head tracking. Is it worth getting in DCS? Will it change your gameplay experience for you? Short answer, yes. Long answer, there's quite a few options. First option for head for tracking we'll talk about is the head tracking through your webcam. So it, there is something called AI track and you could run that in conjunction with o open track. And it basically just turns your webcam into a little head tracking camera. It works reasonably well and it's a lot better than having to use one of your hat sticks to try and look around the aircraft. Great starting place if you've already got a webcam and you don't really want to go and spend the money for something else. There's a lot of other stuff on the market like the Toby Eye Tracker the, and the Track IR, which I am now using the Track IR. I kind of wish I didn't. I'm kind of thinking I should have gone straight to the Toby Eye Tracker. 
but that's just me and maybe there should have been a, I should have looked at a video like this online before I jumped into things obvious one VR if you've already got a VR headset I would use it like why not get used to get used to your flight sticks get used to where everything is and use that VR headset your immersion level is just going to go through the roof if you don't have VR I wouldn't go out and buy it just for just for DCS especially if you're at the stage where you're watching this video before we continue I just wanted to have a quick mention this the purpose of this video is to help send you in the right direction of the information that you need to get started and maybe try and avoid some of the mistakes I made as this is a beginner's beginner's guide it's going to be bare bones there's not going to be too many meat and potatoes there's going to be like maybe two potatoes and one piece of meat it's real simple stuff don't expect too much I guess so you're at the stage now where you want to choose what aircraft to fly two schools of thought around this the first school of thought is just buy flaming cliffs and give yourself a much easier learning curve these aircraft are not full fidelity they have a very simplistic design around their interface and their controls this doesn't mean these aircraft pose any sort of disadvantage relative to the full fidelity aircraft they are just much easier to learn the added bonus to buying fc3 is you get more than one aircraft so you get access to the f-15c the a-10 the su-25 the su-33 the mig 29a and the mig 29s and the su-25 so that's a lot of aircraft for one purchase full fidelity aircraft now my only recommendation around this is if you want to go straight into a full fidelity aircraft be prepared to have patience and choose an aircraft that you're already passionate about how do i get this damn bird off the ground so there's more than one way to tackle this problem there is the youtube route where there's a whole bunch of channels out there dedicated to breakdowns of all the aircraft in dcs so i'm just going to come out straight away and recommend the grim reapers channel it's where i went to learn i very much am much better at learning through just doing and listening to someone else talk about it and showing me as well they have a great channel if you go to their channel you go to the tutorials playlist and you open that up and you will just see all the aircraft hundreds of videos sometimes hundreds of videos just on one aircraft so it's a great place if that's your style of learning the other place you can go to is chuck's guide or chuck's guides that is pretty much i would say the the written version of what the boys at grim reapers have done really really good stuff great content and a lot of it as well so it all just depends on your learning style how you want to learn how you want to approach it do you want to print off chuck's guides so you can have something to reference you're on the bus you're on the train you know you've got it your phone what it just depends on your style of learning and how you want to approach it if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful in any way shape or form feel free to let me know in the comments below Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and thank you for your time and my outro sounds a little bit different because I got a couple of new things for my mic setup before I got a chance to do an outro. I was actually using a, <laughs> a butchered tripod for a mic stand and I picked up a cheap one from Kmart. Hopefully it's cleaned up the audio so I don't have to cram it all through filters and play around with stuff that I really just have no clue about thanks for watching until next time